All right, folks, welcome into another edition of the High School Huddle, your one-stop shop for all things and everything Section 5 Sports. I'm AJ Feldman. He is Carl Jones. The spring sports season winding down. We've got about one week left in the regular season. Sectionals right around the corner. Those get done pretty fast. And, man, we're almost done with high school sports, Carl. It's flying by. And, like, we talked about a little bit, like, you know, fall tends, I don't want to say drag on, but it takes its time. You know, same thing with the winter, but like spring comes and goes like just like that. Like the weather's just not getting nice, man. I'm, I actually can go outside and record in a polo and now they want to end on me, man. So, you know, you, you're right. It's, it's flying by, man. Yeah. The thing with uh, the spring sports is it's always difficult because the nights get a lot colder than the days for obvious reasons. You know, you, you go to work at three. All right. We're, we got shorts. We got the polo going on. A lot of the times you can get to night and it's, you know, jeans and, you know, winter, you know, winter jacket, basically. But this last week, we it has been it has been beautiful shorts all throughout. We both would get some golf in. Carl went back to the land, a little top golf. I was at Oak Hill media day for the 2023 PGA Championship. We had that last week, which is why we were recording this on a Friday. Um, so we're re- recording this on very lucky Friday the 13th. But yeah, yesterday, Oak Hill. I might have played pretty well. Shot in 83. No big deal. You know, um, they're, they're trying to get me on the on the event next year. We'll see if it works for my schedule. Uh, the Thad wants me to work the event. They want me to play in the event. It's it's a whole thing right now. We're, we're negotiating right now. I mean, that sounds like a first of its kind in its history. You know, you, you know, record and walk off. I mean, that's one of one right there. I just got to get the like the GoPro attached to my golf hat and we can get that exclusive coverage right there. Oh, that'd be a Rochester first exclusive right there. We, yeah, the fans want that. They want to see that for sure. Yeah, I don't know if uh, the people I would be playing with. Did you see that? There was this story. Um, I don't know if you saw this. So the U.S. Open qualifier, um, U.S. Open, they have these qualifiers, um, you know, um, you know, top amateurs can do like really good golfers. You know, Tony Romo's done this. I think maybe Steph Curry has played in some of these U.S. Open uh, qualifiers. Some dude had to play in it as a punishment for his fantasy football league for coming in last place. He's like a, you know, a bogey plus golfer. He like cheated his way into the system and, you know, claimed he was a professional. He shot like 125 in like the, um, the U.S. Open qualifier as a punishment for his, uh, his last place uh, fantasy football thing. They ain't kick him off or nothing? <laughs> they, they let him keep playing. I read an article on ESPN about it. Um, let me see if I can get his exact score. Um, they had an article on ESPN. He was like, yeah, my playing partners, once, once they saw, um, you know, that I sucked, they were like, Hey, what, what's going on here? And there's like, yeah, fantasy football. And apparently according to the article, they were fine with it. As long as he like kept up the pace of play, um, didn't, you know, slow them down because you know, it shouldn't have too much of an issue. Um, but he did shoot a 40 over 112, um, which was 40 back of the winners, which is, is not good. Um, it's, it's not good. <laughs> someone like myself who can't go up i know that's terrible (laughs) yeah so so we will see honestly we will see what the u.s open like does about this because that's a pretty funny fantasy football punishment to make someone do just completely embarrass themselves and now i think they're gonna have to get a little uh you know they're gonna have to look into these submissions a little bit closer here yeah i I would say so they now i'm i'm um i'm gonna put my name in next year and now we're going to double that. Now we're getting 200s because of my golf game. So we'll see. Yeah. Um, I don't think your playing partners would uh, even uh, tolerate that. They'd be like, okay, this dude can't get off the tee. Um, <laughs> leave or else we're going to make you leave. Um, but no, I saw that. Thought, thought it was pretty funny. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah. That I, man. <laughs> now it gave me an idea like, hey, maybe I should try doing this. Like, they played some nice courses, you know. Maybe I get onto a course I couldn't normally play, but uh, um, that's enough on that. Let's let's get into the meat and potatoes of our show. Um, you know, we're winding down playoffs uh, right around the corner. Teams gearing up for some sectional runs, some teams defending their titles, some teams trying to get back. Carl, uh, you've got a really hot team picking right now for your team of the week. Yeah, the Pittsburgh girls' last team. I mean, you want to talk about peaking. Uh, we didn't record the last time that they uh, one of their biggest wins of the year, taking down at the time an undefeated Russian Rietta squad, which we've se- I've seen uh, twice this year, I-, I believe. I don't know if you've seen them. I- I- you saw them earlier this week, I believe. And yeah. they're very, very talented um, with a bunch of scores up and down that lineup. And 
Pittsburgh took them down seven to six. So clearly this team is peaking at the right time. They have a, a, a bunch of impressive wins. Took down Fairport, RH, like we talked about, uh, HFL, who is a, a really, really good team, I believe, in Class C uh, yep. in the Black Division. And then also Baldwinsville out of the Syracuse area. Now they do have some – the three losses are to Victor, um, Brighton, and uh, Canandaigua. But those are all early in the year. I mean, they've rattled off eight straight wins after starting off four and three. Because I remember earlier on in the year, we were like, eh, I don't know how great this Pittsburgh team is, well, whatever. Oh, well, fun. they've been doing their thing of late. And, I mean, they're peaking at the right time. The, they actually play tonight at the, uh, the time of this recording uh, against Schrader. They'll end their regular season. Uh, so we'll see if they can um, continue their, their hot streak uh, to end the season off. But they have a bunch of scores. I mean, this, uh, Ella Wilma, I believe she was our player of the week uh, a couple weeks ago. Ellie Bergen, shout out to what she can do on the hoop court. Uh, Dylan Madigan, um, she's also with 28 goals on the year. Jessica Robinson, you know, she's setting everybody up. You know, this week's Chris Paul with uh, 30 assists. Uh, and then Kate Hennessy on the defensive side. It, it was crazy because I saw that she didn't have any – she only had one goal. I'm like, ah, there's no need to talk about her. But then – She's committed to the Bonnie, so she's clearly um, doing her thing on that end of the uh, on, on the field. So they have a bunch of um, players who are doing their thing. Uh, Ella and Ellie are committed to Cornell, so they'll be taking this on to the next level as well. So that's kind of cool. But um, yeah, this Pittsburgh team, I wish we would have got to them last week, but obviously we couldn't. We couldn't. But man, this team is legit and peaking at the right time. Yeah, you mentioned those three early losses: uh, Victor, Brighton, Canadegua. All Class B teams, no teams that they're going to see in that Class A tournament. Their toughest competition, they beat them all this past week. You mentioned the Rush Henrietta win. They also got a really quality 8-3 to three win over Fairport. Um, a, a quality squad. Uh, Pittsford held them scoreless in the second half there. It was 4-3 at the half, 8-3 final. So locking down on the defensive end, um, Grace Sinsbach in goal since box in goal for the Panthers um, getting it done with a second half shutout. And yeah, Pittsburgh, the defending sectional champs, you know, rush Henry is going to be gunning for him. Um, you know, Fairport, uh, probably the third banana there. It's probably, you know, if we had to predict here, a Pittsburgh rush Henry at a final. Um, and like you said, you know, a, a one goal game there, rush Henry has been scratching and clawing and trying to get that sectional title. They've, they've come oh so close lately. Um, we'll see if this is their year, but no, yeah, Pittsburgh, peaking at the right time of the season um, as they try and uh, defend their sectional crown that they won in both 2021 and in uh, 2019 here. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll see uh, how they transpires on this short season. I mean, it just feels so short, man, but we'll see <laughs> what they do with the rest of May and into June. I believe is when the season ends and yeah, uh, I had fun watching them the one time. So we'll see if I can get out to another game. Yeah, my team of the week, I got to see uh, this past, it was, uh, was it Wednesday? I'm losing track of my days. Yes, it was Wednesday. Um, McQuaid Baseball. Um, they were playing at Frontier Field. They took down uh, Fairport. It was 8 nothing that game. Uh, Fairport, um, kind of an up-and-down squad this season. They got some quality players, but um, um, actually it was three days ago, so that was Tuesday. Yeah, that game was on Tuesday. Very important for me to get this day right. I just got obsessed with it. But uh, yeah, the, the story of that game, Will Taylor, um, a, a phenomenal pitcher. You know, at, at Frontier Field, there's, you know, a lot of places you can shoot this game. After the first two innings, I decide to go behind home plate, shoot right behind home plate, shoot uh, through the, the netting area. So you get a really good look, good look at these pitchers. Will Taylor's that dude, folks. He is ridiculous. Um, he threw a no-hitter in that game, um, so that just speaks for itself. He fanned eight. Um, his off-speed stuff is just ridiculous. Like, it has that, you know, you see those, you know, videos on Twitter, the, the insane drops on these pitches, like the, you know, the batter's just getting frozen. This guy had like five or six of them, I know. So I got one of them on a strikeout. We'll play it for you uh, probably right about now. Wow, what a great pitch. Oh, yeah. Wow, look at that pitch. Um, but no, this kid um, had the speed. Um, just Fairport could not catch up to him at all. Um, he took the no-hitter into the seventh. Um, obviously completed it. In, in the, uh, after they got the first out, um, there was a fly ball hit to right. Um, probably should have been caught. It was, it was ruled an error. You know, three guys were, like, converging all around. It was, I was a little, you know, questionable, but um, definitely uh, looking at it again, I thought that was an error. So um, only had one walk on the day. Um, so McQuaid started off this uh, season playing a, a national tournament in Cary, North Carolina. Since they've gotten back from that tournament, 
Um, he's had four starts. He's given up zero runs. Um, really? He has just been lights out since then. Um, he's a D1 commit to Wofford. Um, uh, the other player is going against Braden Consul from Fairport, uh, another strong pitcher. He's going to, uh, to D1 USC Upstate in the Big South Conference, um, but his just bats couldn't uh, his, um, do, a, do a for him. Um, other players for McQuaid um, in that game, getting it done, it was CJ Phelps, uh, Luca, C- Ciara, Ciara Mataro. Um, we're going to go with uh, Taylor also got it done with two RBIs, uh, helping his own cause. Uh, Will Versati um, getting t- uh, another run and Phelps had two more. Phelps went two for four with three RBIs. Um, uh, Taylor uh, one for three with uh, two RBIs. So Fairport is good. They have, or excuse me, McQuaid is good. They have not lost to section five competition this season. They are currently nine and four on the year. All of those four losses, three of those coming in that, uh, that national uh, tournament early in the season when they lost some really close games, they lost three to one, seven to six and seven to three. Both of those games, I believe came down to basically like a, like one inning where they just kind of let things get away from them, but they have been beating good teams. They've, you know, they've beaten Rush Henrietta. They beat Aquinas. They've beaten Fairport. Um, they've been some more teams. Uh, Max Preps is uh, being a little unkind to me right now. Their schedule isn't popping up for me. Um, hasn't been working all day. So I was really disappointed to hear that, but uh they beat Sutherland uh, earlier this week. They scored eight runs in the third inning in to get that win against a pretty good Sutherland squad. So, um, yeah, the, the McQuaid baseball team, I really liked what I saw. Um, it's probably going to be between them and Hilton uh, in this uh, in the sectionals, those top two dogs. Um, but, you know, it's all about your aces uh, in the in the postseason. We'll see uh, if they got a second guy to get them through that semifinal game, which is always uh, the big one in uh, in baseball. Because, you know, you can start your ace in your quarterfinal game and you're in your championship game. You need that second guy. Um, uh, but but Will Taylor, he's certainly that guy. Yeah, he's that dude for sure. And then doing it at Frontier Field, man, that's actually kind of lit, you know? Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, you got the look, bright light, you know, a little, I don't want to say like too much pressure, but, you know, it's a different environment, you know? Yeah, I'm sure they've been to a couple of Red, uh, Red Wings games, so I'm sure they've always, you know, dreams or whatever, want to play on that field. And being able to get a no-hitter on that stage is, is, is really cool and, um, I remember earlier in the year, they were going out of town, and usually those teams who, you know, going out of town a lot and, and playing not so many teams from their own region, they're pretty good. But then I saw that they got to a slow start. I'm like, ah, okay, whatever. Well, now that you reminded me that this team is back, they're legit. That was just a little bump in the road, or, or like you said, just one anything go, go their way. This McQuay team is legit, and we'll see how far they can take them or see how far Will Taylor can take them. <laughs> Yeah, last year losing 1-0 to Penfield in the uh, the sectional semifinals in a, in a pitcher's duel. So um, Penfield, the eventual sectional champ. So McQuaid was right in it last year. They're going to be right in it again this year. Uh, we'll see if they can finish off the deal this time around. Um, moving over to our under the radar teams, some teams that deserve a little pub. Carl, who you got for us today? We're going with the Wayne Eagles in front of the boys' lax division. Okay, so they're nine and three right now, nine and eight last year. So They've already matched the win total from last year, so shout out to them for doing so in that regard. Similar to Pittsburgh, got off to a little bit of a slow start, or you know, uh, started off two and two, and since then they've rattled off seven, uh, the seven and one since then. Their three losses are, or uh, to Palmac, who, as we all know, is really, really darn good in Class C, and is our are the overwhelming favorites to to do so again. Uh, a game to Aquinas, which was twenty three to fourteen. I, I need to know what went on in that game. That's a lot of goals both ways, so I need to know what was going on. Maybe maybe the goalies got sick and they just played with empty nets or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, that that was a lot. So, we, I, I really want to know what went wrong. Wh- whoever is from Wayne is listening to this, y'all let me know. I, I just, just <laughs> don't know. So, I just want to know because I need to put some context into that game, right? And then uh, earlier this year, I actually saw them play Greece uh, where they lost in overtime, and that was a fun back-and-forth game. Uh, literally, both teams were going tit for tat uh go scoring so they clearly can put the ball in the back of the net and it, it shows in their in their stats they have a well-balanced attack over 20, uh, five players with 25 points or more uh two players Noah Means and Nate Michelle with 27 goals on the year so those are the two guys who um do most of the heavy lifting in terms of uh the scoring but th- this Wayne team you know uh like I said earlier started off slow have done their thing to end the season uh so we'll see if they can you know this if this is more of a reflection of their schedule or they've just genuinely gotten better 
at this point in the year. I mean, they're in the same division as Palmac and Newark. So they took down Newark in week one, or I believe in the first couple games of the season. So that's uh, they clearly can match up with them. And we'll see if they can do anything with, uh, with Palmac. Yeah, they did take down Newark game one of the season, 16 to four. Um, looking at the just by pure record alone uh, in Class C, it's it's Palmac at the top, twelve and one. You got Wayne at nine and three, Newark and eight and four, also HFL at seven and six. So they beat Newark already. They didn't get a chance to take down HFL, like you mentioned. Palmac, they're just pretty darn good. Um, they lost to them, uh, you know, fifteen to five. So that's a uh, a pretty substantial goal differential to turn around in a sectional playoff game. But like you said, they're they're playing good lacrosse right now, and uh, we'll see if they can uh, you know turn things around in the playoffs. Um, my under the radar team, uh, I feel like we've talked a lot about double a softball this year. Um, it's kind of, you know, Victor and Fairport and Penfield, you know, it, you know, it looked like it was Victor and Fairport, then Penfield got a win. Like, all right, maybe, maybe Penfield. And then Fairport starting against the win. So like, all right, we got this. It's Fairport. We got it. Fairport. Rush Henrietta softball. Taken down Fairport on Wednesday, two days ago. They took them down four to one. You know, softball, much like baseball, but especially in softball, because you can swing around your arm a lot. You can pitch just about every single inning, every single game. They got a good one. Caden Hartle, their stud pitcher. She threw a one hitter against Fairport, a state ranked Fairport team that is really gosh darn good. She had a one hitter with nine strikeouts in that four to one win. Um, getting it done at the bat um, was Olivia Sheffer, two and two for four. Uh, she had a two-run double to break a one-one tie in the the fourth inning. Sammy Williams also had two hits in RBI, so that's a big win for them. Um, you know, they also uh, just yesterday they played Victor. You know, they got the loss, um, ten to six, but still, you know, in softball. It, it's good that even when you're losing, you can you can put runs on the plate. You know, um, Hartle got the start there. She gave up 10 runs. But if you can you can no hit Fairport, you can certainly get that 10 runs down against a team like Victor. Um, uh, for Rush Henrietta in that Victor game, um, Carly Sabazic, Elizabeth Gleghorn, Robin Bond, and Emily Sharon each had two hits. And then uh, just a week ago from today's we recorded this. Uh, they beat Penfield 6-2. to two. Uh, Hartle, 12 Ks on the mound. Uh, she had two hits at the plate. Uh, Gleg Horton with uh, three for four, three RBIs. Olivia Sheff for two hits. So that's basically the three top dogs in AA right there that they played in one week. They went two for one. They, uh, you know, they lost a high-scoring battle to Victor. So, you know, Rush Henrietta, I saw them very early in the season. They beat a, a Hilton squad where they kind of just ran around the bases a couple times because um, Hilton just had kind of had a tough game there. So I didn't really know what to make of uh, this Rush Henrietta team, but certainly they're finding something at the right uh, time of the season. Caden Hartle's getting it done on the mound, and that's kind of all you need in softball. If you can get those two things together, if you can start getting some hot bats and you have a stud on the mound, uh, you know, who, who knows how far you can go in these playoffs. Oh, for sure. And la talking about playoffs, last year they met a Schrader squad who, as we all know, is pretty darn good, but Schrader's now no longer in AA, so they don't have to worry about that juggernaut. And like you said, they clearly can compete with anyone in AA. So – We'll see if they can um, ride that arm and, you know, get a couple uh, hot, hot at bats. And all you need is a couple of innings, right? All you need is one, to be honest. I mean, <laughs> as I uh, doing the section five best the other day. And obviously, as you know, being at all these games, literally one inning is it over with. So, so like you said, arm, a couple of hot at bats, one inning, change the trajectory of a lot of stuff. So the Royal comments, actually, it was funny when I went to go see Russian Rietta and, uh, I forget who they were playing in. Oh, Canada. Canada girls. Yeah. The, the softball team was going uh, was playing and there was a lot of energy going on. So the, the parents were, were, were into it as well. So clearly a lot of passionate uh, Royal comments over there. So shout out to the Royal comments. Yeah. Um, they're, they're certainly contenders in double a, they, uh, <clears throat> they get Schrader later tonight as we were recording this on Friday. So another test, they actually got them, um, you know, earlier this week, uh, they lost to him eight to two. So, and then they get Penfield again, and then they get Aquinas. So they really stacked their schedule with their top teams at the end of the season. Also probably had some rain delays that got pushed back there. But Penfield, or excuse me, Rush Henrietta, um, a team certainly to watch in AA, which is turning out to be one of uh, the most interesting brackets to talk about um, for sure. Moving on to our games of the week, we got about one more segment of this uh, before the playoffs come. So uh, we've got some great games to close down the regular season. Carl, what do you have your eyes on? For me, uh, we're going to go over to, 
to the diamond. We're going to rock with the double A boys, Hilton, top team in, in uh, class double A. And they play Churchville Chilot, the top team, I believe, in A1, class A1, I want to say. The mm-hmm. record speak for themselves. Hilton's 13 and three. Uh, Churchville Chilot is 14 and four. So clearly, these are two teams that are up um, in the upper echelon of the Section 5. It's the first meeting, and they won't play each other in the postseason. So these teams are um, going to see who this is. I guess it's kind of bragging rights, so to speak. If both of these teams were to come out, you know, in their respective classes, it's like, oh, well, we took y'all down in the regular season and we won our sectional title. So technically, we were the top team in Section 5. One of those little things, right? But as Let's always, not forget talk- about Palmac, though. Let's not forget about the Palmac Red Raiders, baby. You know what? I don't know if they've given up a run yet. So, like, shout they, out. To they them. have given up some runs, uh, but not many. Uh, they still have not lost a game, though. For sure, for sure. Shout out to Palmac. That was a hilarious episode to record, by the way. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. Obviously, every time I talk about Hilton, I got to talk about my dog, Preston Prince. So, hopefully, he's on the mound against Churchill Charlie. I saw Charlie earlier this year. They got a, some dudes that can, uh, that can rake it. So, we'll see how that matchup uh, pans out. That's why I got my eye on that one. And that will be, I believe, the 17th. So that will be what next Monday, I want to say. Tuesday. 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 I got it because I'm looking at the schedule right now. And my game of the week is also on Tuesday. Um, Pittsburgh Boys Lacrosse taking on Canadagua. Um, you know, we talk a lot about these class B teams in boys lacrosse, you know, your Victors, your uh, you know, your Thomases, your Canadaguas, uh, things like that. But Class A, Pittsburgh is really going on a run here. They've had some really quality wins down the stretch. They beat Penfield in overtime. I was at this game um, as a spider jumps onto my keyboard. Um, I don't know if I can find where that thing went. Um, it was a small spider. So that is not- a professional right there, folks. He kept talking. Oh, we got we got this. All right. All right. Did I get it? I got the spider. <laughs> I killed the like, spider. I can tell he's great under pressure right there. He didn't panic. He kept his he kept his eyes on the attention, you know, all that you know, he kept his he stayed focused on the task at hand while killing the spider. I gotta get my, my, my kudos for that one right there. All right, we got that. You know, just something fell. I was like, what just fell? And I was like, oh my gosh, that is a spider. Um, no, but we got the spider. We're back on track. Pittsburgh boys lacrosse. Like I said, five they beat Benfield five to four, a low score and a fair. Um, they beat Thomas in a lower scoring affair 10 days ago. They beat him four to two. Um, which is more of a soccer score than a boys lacrosse score. Then they, they also beat Hamburg five to three, like a week ago. So you go to Pittsburgh, you're not going to get a lot of goals is what um, I've both learned and I uh, can clearly see from the schedule. So reminder, if we ever get a, a playoff game for them, go early because the game might be one nothing. Um, they also beat Spencer Port, which we talked about a lot. Uh, they did not let Spencer Port get another big win. Uh, they beat him eight to seven there. Um, but Pittsburgh's really coming on their own at the end of the season. Um, it seems like it's Pittsburgh and Fairport in the collision course in Class A. They met game one of the season. It was 8-7 for Pittsburgh. Um, so Pittsburgh is rounding into its own. Um, Canadagua, you know, kind of up and down. They haven't had such uh, great luck against these elite squads. They lost to uh, Spencerport. They lost to Victor. Um, well, they did beat Fairport. Um, so they're holding their own, but maybe not quite the Canadagua that we saw. Um, last year, they lost to Victor 7-2, a tough game for them there. But, you know, this is going to be a really great tune-up for both of these squads heading into uh, sectionals. Canada was also got a game uh, later tonight against uh, Penfield. So both these teams getting some good tests um, before their respective uh, playoff runs. Can I get that Canada with us, uh, I saw against Pinyan earlier in the year? That, you know, <laughs> shut out Pinyan. Terrible for highlights, by the way. Don't don't get it twisted. But yes. uh, that was a, obviously a very formidable foe. So we'll see if they can get back to that level of play. And obviously, as you said, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh looks like they're turning things around at the right time. Yes, certainly. Uh, we've got a lot of great stuff coming for you. Um, you know, regular season winding down. Sectionals right around the corner. It's really fun. Um, you know, see, you know, especially with the spring sports, a lot of this stuff happens on the same day. You know, you got your you know, you'll get to your softball and your boys lacrosse one day. And, you know, you get all these sports coming together. We get some really fun sports cast for you. We can't wait to get that for you. We can't wait to cover for you here on the high school huddle um, where we are both, you know, covering high school teams, killing arachnids all at the same time. It was a jam-packed show for you today. You never know what's going to happen on the high school huddle. Von Miller can sign, you know, <laughs> spiders can fall from the sky. Everything can happen here on the high school huddle. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Shout out to Von Miller for that, though, by the way. Shout out to Von. Shout out to Vaughn for all of Carl's Twitter followers that he got. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. I can't but wait. That for, will, I can't wait for the stretch. 
Exactly, exactly. Um, but uh, but that is all we have time for us today. Thank you once again for listening. You can find us on Apple Podcasts. You can find us on Spotify. You can find us on YouTube and RochesterFirst.com. we got a lot of places to join uh, join the show, listen along. Thanks for your feedback, everybody. Uh, feel free to send us some suggestions on some teams, some things we got to cover. Um, but that is all the time we have for you today. I'm AJ Feldman. He's Carl Jones. This was the High School Huddle, and we will see you next time.